July 4th, 1776, our founding fathers signed the Declaration of Independence. We know this day as the very first Independence Day. It is now an American holiday associated with food, fun, family, and fireworks. Lots of fireworks. It's a day when we celebrate what's important. It's a day when we celebrate this nation's freedom. It is also a chance for us to focus on another freedom that we have, a freedom given to us not by our founding fathers, but by our heavenly father. So as we take time to celebrate our nation's independence and freedom, let's also pause and thank God for our spiritual freedom from sin, shame, and fear. A freedom that has been made possible by Jesus. Do you thank God for America today? Are you thankful that you live in a land of freedom? That we can come and worship today. You know, this is the first time in 11 years that we've had a 4th of July celebration, an Independence Day holiday to come on Sunday. And uh, so I was a little discombobulated. Would anybody be here today? And you're here. And you look good. <laughs> but uh, I know that uh, it's a big vacation time. But it's a very important Sunday. Our nation needs help from God. We need a revival. And only God can help us. The Republicans, nor the Democrats, nor the Independents, can help us, but only God can touch us. And I want to pray a special prayer for our nation. Would you join with me right now? Heavenly Father, I just thank you for America. Lord, there's no doubt that you got it, our forefathers. And, 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 and Lord, that you led us to be a nation that we could bless the entire world with the freedom that we have found because of you. But we're in great need this morning. And only you know how great our need is, much more than we. But we call out to you. And as we, your people, pray, may we pray your word. May we pray your word right now in our hearts that says from you, your promise. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then your promises I will hear from heaven. Hear us today, Father. I will forgive their sin. Forgive us today, Father, for taking so much for granted, for not maybe shine in the light as often and as well as we could for you. Thank you for forgiveness today. And I will heal this land you promised. And I just received healing today. Where there's division, I pray, Lord, that there would become a, a nation of unity in the things that are good and wholesome and healthy from you. We pray, Father, that the church, our church, Vidalia, Church of God, would take the lead in this community. Be all that you've called us to be to make a difference. Not to curse the darkness, but to be the light in the darkness. And we thank you that we are. And we'll praise you for all that's accomplished in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Would you just thank God one more time? For the freedom we have to assemble today, the freedom to worship freely, the freedom to pray, the freedom to hear the word of God today. On the screen, you'll notice a prayer requests, and I want to lead you in prayer for our church family. Uh, Lisa is going to have surgery on Tuesday. She's here this morning. Let's pray for a great and mighty healing in her body. And um, Lisa, we're with you standing with you. You see several in, uh, prayer requests on the board and let's pray together. Father, in the name of the Lord, you said my house shall be called a house of prayer of all nations and Lord, your house is, is, is a house for people 
not-for-profit. Help us, Lord, today to be focused on the most important thing that you're focused on, and that's your people, people who don't know you, people who need to know you. And I pray, God, today that you would touch your people who need healing this morning especially, people who are going through a difficult time in their life. And Lord, we pray for the Coleman family this morning. And we ask that, Lord, that we add them to this prayer list this morning, the Jeanette Coleman family. We ask you to heal and minister to their hearts today. And we'll give you the praise for healing and strengthening and encouraging and giving peace and joy today in every way. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. It is so good to see you. And I did want to announce to you, because I know the relationship that Jeanette Coleman has had in our church and attends many of our functions here. She passed away early this morning. Most of you know that, uh, just hearing the word this morning. But uh, as it's filtered through our church, quite a shock. Uh, what, a, what a wonderful lady uh, she is and was. And so remember the Coleman family when you pray, would you please? And I'm sure arrangements will be forthcoming. But it's just good to be in his presence today, and it's good to see you. Anybody happy about being here today? Yeah. Well, I hope so. Well, let's give God praise. He made it possible, hasn't he? I never take coming to the house of the Lord for granted, but if you are a guest with us, and if you haven't uh, gone to a visitor's card yet, found one of those uh, welcome cards, guest cards, please do, and fill it out. Put it in the... Uh, offering plate as you leave or give it to, to the person at the uh, Welcome Center and we've got a gift for you. We just are so glad you're here with us today. Uh, again, thank you so very much for your generous support for our church. Uh, you know, next Sunday I'm going to just uh, not take a long time, but I'm just going to talk about uh, areas in which you give and you're making a difference uh, during the offering time next week. So, um, so just give us, always keeps us informed about what's going on and, and where our money is owing and being spent, whether it's through the tithe or the general fund or special um, free will offerings that we give here from time to time. But it's good to be a part of a body of Christ that's making a difference in this community, in this church, uh, because of your faithfulness and blessing from God. Thank you so much. Uh, let's turn our attention to the screen, and let's uh, before we come back to worship, let's just open our hearts today in spirit and truth and worship the one that's worthy. But let's turn our attention to the video announcements at this time. Good morning. We are so glad you decided to join us for worship here at Battery Church of God. If you're a first-time guest here, we want to connect with you. You can fill out the connect card in the queue in front of you. Or you can scan the QR code on the back of the bulletin you've just received. Or you can visit our webpage at bodyofchurch.org and click connect on the top right corner. Be sure to stop by the Welcome Center to get your free gift. We look forward to seeing you at our next service. It's time to get ready for the 2020-21 Kids Crusade, July the 11th through the 14th. 5.30 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. Register early online. And for more information, talk to Pastor Brandy. Make plans to attend Georgia's third annual Bible reading, Wednesday, July the 14th at 7.14 a.m. at the Thames County Courthouse. All 158 counties throughout Georgia will be reading the Word of God. An Overcomers Outreach Conference is scheduled for Saturday, July the 24th at the stage at City Park from 12 noon to 4 p.m. This community-wide event offers a message of freedom and recovery through Jesus Christ to those who are fighting the battle of addiction. That's Saturday, July the 24th at City Park. The competition continues every Wednesday night in Tribe Wars. This competition includes our children's department and our youth, all competing to see who the winner will be. Be here Wednesday night at 6.30. You can stay up to date with all of our church events by following our social media platforms. Now you know some of the happenings here at the Vidalia Church. We invite you to become a part of what God is doing here. Should you need Pastor Merritt or the staff, just give us a call. Our phone numbers are listed in your bulletin. Have a great week and we'll see you at the next service.
before we sing this last song, I just want to share something. I always try to put our songs together on Wednesday nights, and on Wednesday night, I, um, I chose this song, and I knew it was going to be hard to sing this morning because the last time I sang it, I was standing at my brother's graveside, but it just wouldn't let me go to sing this morning. Then this morning when we found out about Sister Jeanette, Darren shared with us that her church, Cedar Cross, and had shared a video where just this past Wednesday night, sitting at a keyboard just by herself, she sang this very song, Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone. I'm telling you, you can know that kind of freedom. Because yesterday, when she had that stroke, there was probably no fear in her because she knew you and I can live like that too. Would you think about that, that kind of freedom as we sing this final song this morning? just lift your hands and let's just praise him right now. What a wonderful, wonderful privilege to know his grace, a personal relationship today. You know, David said, the Lord is my shepherd. He's not just a shepherd. He's my shepherd. Would you just lift your hands 
and thank God that you can sing, He is forever mine. I'm His and He's mine today, that personal relationship. Father, we glorify, we thank you for your presence. Oh, we don't take your presence for granted. We thank you for the joy that's in the Holy Spirit this morning in us, in this service today, in our hearts flowing today, that we've got a God that we can experience this morning, that you speak and that you minister and that you uplift and that you lift up in your presence that that we need today from you. And we give you the glory and the praise in Jesus' name. Thank you for it, church. Would you just give God praise again this morning? Give him praise. Let's bless him today. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Would you greet some people around you now? Just uh, You've probably already done that, but do it again, would you? Praise the Lord. I'll try not to keep you past your barbecue time today for the next two hours if you've got time we'll we'll get into God's word and uh, I don't think I've got a long message today but every time I say that it's longer than I intended so don't hold me to that but on this uh, day that we celebrate our independence for the next few minutes I want to minister living in freedom living in freedom Father, I pray that the message today, the word of God, will go forth. It, pray, it, will, it will not seem like a holiday message. But Lord, you've touched my heart and you've touched my mind with some things today that I pray will strengthen us and set us free in any area. And that we can live in the vastness, hallelujah, of the freedom that we have. In you, Christ Jesus, open our hearts now to you as we do. May you fill us with your word, the Holy Spirit, change our lives in Jesus' name. Amen. You know, freedom is our greatest national treasure. Uh, the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia is one of thousands of historical landmarks and documents from the days of our founding fathers when the Declaration of Independence was signed by those 53 delegates from the 13 colonies, declaring that they would not live in tyranny and in bondage to a foreign power. But on that liberty bell is the inscription, proclaim liberty throughout all the land to all the inhabitants thereof. You know, those words didn't come from Patrick Henry, the voice of the revolution, or the founding fathers who I just encourage you to study how often they spoke about the foundation of our nation being on the word of God. It's called the Judeo-Christian ethic. But those words came from Leviticus 25 and verse 10. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land. And that's what I want to do this morning. I want to proclaim a greater liberty. You know to um, the historical revisionists that are trying to teach that our nation was not founded on the word of God and on God. To those that would try to counsel, cancel our history from what we know that it is. It's very important for us to know that liberty, freedom, is not America's gift to this world, but it is God's gift to all mankind. If you're in China, China, communist China or Kenya or wherever you may be a nation, a nationality, a, an inhabitant of, God has proclaimed to us that we can be free. And he intends for us to live that way. The very first words, think about this, that God spoke to Adam after he created him was in Genesis 2 and verse 16. You are free. God's gift. God's intention to every one of us. And of course, Adam forfeited that freedom when he disobeyed God. 
As a matter of fact, Jesus said it clearly in John 8 and verse 34. He said, I tell you the truth. Anyone who sins is a slave to sin. And because of our sin, the sin not only of our father Adam, but inherent sin and our own choice to sin, you and I deal with a lot of bondages uh, that come against us to enslave us, to hold us captive. As a matter of fact, the word of God outlines a lot of different ways we can be taken captive, not just to the law of sin and death that Jesus was referring to there in John 8. But there is what Paul called in Romans 8 and 15 a spirit of bondage, again, to fear. There are emotional bondages that people are held captive by their emotions. We know how much the Bible talks about addictions that try to take people captive. There is vain philosophies. You know, uh, we can even be held captive in an unhealthy, abusive relationship where people are manipulating and controlling, dominating and intimidating someone to conform and it becomes a type of, of bondage. There is certainly religious bondage. The uh, legalism that Paul dealt with in places like Galatian, uh, the book of Galatians when he wrote in Galatians uh, chapter five and verse one, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Don't be entangled again by a yoke of bondage. He was talking about traditions of men and legalism. But uh, there, there's financial bondage. And perhaps we've, maybe most of us have known that more than we would like. Proverbs 22 and 7 says that, that the borrower is slave to the lender. And we have to be careful not to enslave ourselves with these bondages that come to control us and keep us from living the life of freedom, not just from sin and death, but any area of our lives other than what Christ intended for us to live. But you know, the great news is, we've been singing about it and talking about it already, is that Jesus, the Messiah, came first before the liberty bell to proclaim liberty throughout the land. When he started his ministry, his purpose statement, if you will. In Luke's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 18, uh, he, he said, this is my purpose. He came to his hometown in his hometown synagogue and took not the Constitution or the preamble to the Constitution, but the Word of God that sets us free. And he said, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, quoting from Isaiah. Chapter 61, the Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news to the poor, to set at liberty, he tells us, to proclaim freedom, to proclaim freedom to the prisoners, the recovery of sight to the blind, to release the oppressed. Then he said to proclaim the year of jubilee, to proclaim the the year of the Lord's favor, the year of the Lord's blessing, and you just get this sense that, that Jesus, when he came, he had it as his purpose. I, I want you to get back to the original intention that God has for you and that you would live in freedom. We love to sing that song, There's Power in the Name of Jesus. Breaks every chain, breaks every chain, breaks every chain, and he certainly does. When you and I believe on him, we can... We can sing, I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God. That freedom that we have. At age 19, kneeling beside my bed at midnight on June the 17th, 1974, I confessed my sin, accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. And I tell you, it was like a great weight of burden lifted off my heart and my mind. And I was free. Praise the Lord. A freedom that I had not known till that point. And the Lord brings us that message. John 8 36. The one that the Son sets free, Jesus said, is free indeed. Really free. Romans 8 and 1, Paul said, There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life has set me free 
from the law of sin and death. Anybody free in this place this morning? Do you celebrate your freedom? Because the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 3, 17, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Think about that. It gives us the understanding where the Spirit of the Lord is not in your life or not operating in your life, there's bondage. But where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. It's not just in a church service, but it's in our own personal tabernacles and temples in that that we can have that experience this morning of really being free and living in that freedom. And that's what I, I want to minister. I just want to talk about living in that freedom. And I find uh, just a powerful proclamation. We've been talking about the proclamation on the Liberty Bell, the proclamation of Jesus. But I, I found a, a powerful proclamation in the Psalms. I want you to look at it with me. Psalm 119, the longest chapter, not only in the book of Psalms, but it's the longest chapter of the Bible. If I'm going to preach all 170 plus of those verses, I better get going, right? No, I'm just going to look at verse 45. You know, when this verse just leaped off the page at me, I thought, what a great statement. You know, the rabbis, uh, they, they believe that David penned Psalm 119. And uh, David was such a man that, that he could, uh, he had such a passion that you can almost see him in his own experience in worship penning this scripture when he says, I will. Walk about in freedom, for I have sought your precepts, or I'm devoted to your commandments, the NLT says. I, I'm, I'm in love with your commandments. And what a declaration. Now, matter of fact, I just want to I just want to ask you to declare that over your life right now. I think it would help us. Just that first phrase. Would you declare it with me right now? I will walk about in freedom. Let's do it again. I will walk about in freedom. Amen. How freeing is that? What a powerful word is that? You know, the original language, the Hebrew, it, it, it gives such imagery. Uh, this word, when the psalmist said, I will walk about in freedom, it really in the Hebrew is, I will walk about in my wide spaces, my wide places. I'm going to go. I'm going to travel. I, I'm going to walk about. It's a broad place. It's a spacious place. It's, it's reaching and far-reaching, an expansive place of liberty. And that's what the psalmist understood in his life, that he could have that life that was full of freedom every day in his life, in every situation, in every relationship of his life, that he could walk about in freedom. And I want to give you four truths from this, this verse that applies and is uh, indicated from this verse. And the first one is this. Living in freedom is a decision I make. Living in freedom is a decision I make. I will walk about in freedom. It's a decisive statement. It's a statement of decision. Everything in your life will be determined, and it boils down to what you will to do. You can make a conscious decision to this morning to live in freedom, to be free. And by the grace of God that we've already sang about, that I'll talk more about in just a minute, that I've already mentioned, that he that the Son sets free is free indeed. We can declare it over our lives. We can make a decision. I will. If there's an area in my life this morning in relationships or addiction, any area of my life, maybe financial bondage, I can make a decision that says I will walk about in freedom. Now today, of course, we're celebrating what is called the Declaration of Independence. And those signers of the Declaration, those 56 delegates in those 13 colonies, they made a decision with that declaration that they would not live under tyranny. Taxation without representation, they said, is tyranny. We will not live under that kind of a tyranny that we have to be told 
who we can worship. And the church, that, that's why they came to America as you study the founding documents of the 1600s. They made a declaration on that July the 4th, 1776 that we're celebrating today. But they followed up that declaration with a war of independence. See, anytime you make a declaration of freedom, you just, you just need to get ready because it's going to be a battle, but thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The enemy's going to come every way he can, but we make a decision that we are going to be independent of anything that would put us in bondage. Anyone who would try to control us in our life, we're going to be, before you can experience freedom, you've got to, you've got to be independent. You've got to make a, a decision. You know, sometimes we, uh, we don't say I will. We say I feel. You know, and uh, we, we get into this thing of feelings. You know, feelings are, it's a wonderful part of God's creation of our anatomy and, and mind and body. <clears throat> but feelings, emotions, they make great followers, but they make lousy leaders. And people say, just follow your heart. No, you better not do that. Because Jeremiah said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And who can know it? God said, I know it. And I'm glad he knows it and still loves me. And uh, the, the point is, is that uh, the mind, we call it, is made up of three components. The intellect, the will, and the emotions. The, your emotions are important. Don't discount them. God's an emotional God. I mean, the Bible says in Zephaniah 3.17 that he sings over you. That's how emotional our God is. How many of you are glad for emotions? Yeah. I am too. But you see, in my mind, in my intellect, I think for myself. I, I reason so that I can make a decision. I've got a will that God has given to me. And those feelings come to affirm peace and joy that I've made the right decision. We live in a culture right now that says if it feels good, do it. We live in a, a culture right now that that's debating over gender identity. You know why? Not because biology says it. Not because sociology says it. Not even because reality says it. But because someone says, I feel like I'm this gender. And we get into all kinds of bondage simply because of our following what we feel in this culture, this um, society of ours has, has so distorted absolute truth. And when this started happening, especially it happened, started happening more than 50 or 60 years ago, but when our nation started buying into um, moral relativism and situational ethics, we, we, we find ourselves in this place today. It's like it's snowballing. But it's not what I feel. It's what I will. And if I live by what I feel, I'm going to end up in bondage. But if I will to do, look at this from Jesus in John 17. John 7 and 17. If anyone chooses, we're talking about decisions. If anyone chooses to do the will or God's will, he will find out whether my teaching comes from God or whether I speak on my own. My point is this. Make your decision. Make your declaration. Declare your independence from anything that would take you captive. Your decisions will determine your freedom. Your decisions will determine your destiny. And I encourage you today, if there's any kind of an a bondage that's trying to attach itself to your mind and your relationships and your spiritual relationship your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, lay aside, make a decision today that I'm going to walk in the freedom that Christ has set me free with today. Amen? Number two, the second truth. 
that we can pull out of this verse from the psalmist today is living in freedom is responsibility I take. Freedom is not licentiousness. And there was a debate on uh, Facebook this week, and, and one of the one of, a young pastor that I know well, he just he great he just went to his first church to pastor as lead pastor, and he was going to preach this morning on what are you doing with your freedom? And he was asking for everybody's opinion. My goodness gracious, if I asked for everybody's opinion before I preached, I'd be so confused. Y'all be here all morning because I'm a type A personality, and I'd have to give you every reason. That they gave. But anyway, but, but the point is, is that when we begin to think about, uh, somebody said in, in their comment that, that uh, you, you know, they brought it out so succinctly, they brought it out so well that freedom, as God intended it in Genesis 2.16 when he said that to Adam and throughout Leviticus 25 and 10 and throughout the word of God and his intention is not some kind of anarchy or rebellion. I just do what I want to do. No real freedom, true freedom, comes with boundaries that protect us and keep us healthy and whole. And that's the kind of freedom Adam had. That's the kind of freedom he forfeited when he disobeyed. That's the kind of freedom we forfeit when we disobey. But it's the kind of freedom we can have and take back when you and I accept our responsibility first to God, to his word, you know, the psalmist said here, he said, for I love or I, I keep your precepts. I, I, I just want you to, uh, I, I sought them out. I'm devoted to your precepts in life. And he's saying, you know, I've got a responsibility to live free, to have that freedom. It's going to be a choice, but it's going to be a responsibility to live in the boundaries that God has given to me of, of, um, of real truth. And again, we go back to the Garden of Eden because every time I say what God said to Adam, the very first thing that he said to Adam in Genesis 2.16, you are free. I always, I always like to say that to get us thinking. But if you read the first words, not that he said to Adam, but the first words of Genesis 2.16... It said, God commanded Adam. You are free to eat of all of these trees that I've made for you in the garden. No, I don't know. Were there thousands of them? I don't know. You're free to, free to eat all of these trees. But the one tree that you're not free, there's a boundary. If you're going to live in freedom, if you're going to live in the spacious and you're going to walk about in freedom, there's that one tree that you are not to eat of the tree of the knowledge of, of good and evil. And that's that responsibility that we have to God, to trust what God says, not lean to our own understanding. There is a way that seems right unto a man. But the end thereof is the way of death. And Jesus said it this way in John 8, 31. He said, uh, if you hold to my teachings or if you continue in my word. And he said this to those that believed in him, the Bible says. Then you are truly my disciples. You're my disciples indeed. Say the rest of it with me. And you shall know the truth. And the truth will set you free. What was the condition? Well, the condition was that we hold to his teaching. That's the condition, that we live in his word, that we live in his precepts, that we devote ourselves to his commandment. Matter of fact, James said in James 2 and 25, he, he called the word of God the perfect law of liberty. And when the Bible uses the word law, it's not talking about the legalism of human tradition or civil 
uh, restrictions for a particular group of people, but it's talking to us about the Torah, the word of the living God. And it's also a responsibility that I have, according to what the psalmist is saying to here, here to me, is that if I'm going to truly live in freedom, I've got to be I've got to live in the boundaries and be responsible to God and, and his protection of my life. I just can't do my own thing. But second of all, it's a responsibility to others. It's a responsibility to serve others. Leo Tolstoy said that life is a place of service and happiness is only found when we serve others. And this is the way the Apostle Paul talked about it in Galatians 5. And I've already given you verse 1. But he's talking about liberty. He's talking about freedom from legalism and bondage. He said, you, my brothers, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. And that's true freedom. It's responsible. Your actions and my actions affect others. Your actions and my actions can intimidate or we can dominate or, or we can manipulate if we're not careful. And it involves not just, you know, Charles Swindoll wrote a great book years ago uh, on grace. I have it. I can't remember the title right now. I have it in my library. And I read that book and I've read that book and I've studied that book. It's a great book on grace. And I remember one chapter, he says, grace is letting others be free in their grace, in God's grace for them. It's, it's letting others, you, you know, it, it's very important for us that we, we allow others to think for themselves. I think when you come to church, you ought not leave your brain outside in the car. I think you, you, ought to, you ought to think. And, uh, you know, the Bereans did that. And it, Paul was preaching, and the Bible said in, in Acts 17, they'd go home and get their, their, their Old Testament out, and they'd say, is, is, this, is he saying what I thought he said? But, but the point is, is that we need to think for ourselves. When you and I, when you and I think for ourselves, that's when we grow and that's when we get creativity. We learn, and, and then, then we have that dialogue. Uh, did you tell your children, think for yourselves? Did anybody ever hear that from your parents? Think for yourselves. Don't get caught up in the herd mentality. On this 4th of July, we are in a political fight right now in this country over groupthink, censorship. Where there are those that are claiming liberty, but they want to censor what you say. Isn't that amazing? This group think. And they're screaming. It's a dangerous thing when we start following the party line and, and, and we can't think for ourselves. And, and, and it's almost like we're in a cult. And, and we got to be told what to think. No, it's a form of mental, it's, it's a form of mental tyranny. And I just want to shout it loud this morning. Certainly, we go back to the boundaries, being responsible for to God. We don't, we don't say whatever we want to say. We're responsible to others, but we're also responsible for others to think and speak freely. We we call it one of the great four freedoms that we have that begins our constitution in the preamble is freedom of speech. We can come here today and hear the word of God. We're not in some communist country, thank God, or some Muslim country, thank God that we can talk about the saving grace of Jesus who really sets us free today. And we're not free. We're free to think, free to say, but we're not free to tell others how they've got to feel. Yeah, I get, sometimes I have people say, you ought not to feel that way. Well, who gave you the right to say that? <laughs> I don't know if they had a right, they, they, maybe they ought to feel that way, I don't know. 
But the point is, is that's how we grow. And be respectful of one another. And, and be able to have a dialogue and listen. The Bible says in Proverbs 27, 17, as iron sharpens iron. So one person, one man sharpens another. The third truth is not only living in freedom is a decision. Living in freedom is a responsibility I take. But living in freedom requires diligence on my part. And your freedom, whether it's national freedom or your spiritual freedom or your personal freedom, your freedom has to be guarded. And when I hear the psalmist say this, he says, I'm going to walk about in freedom. I get a picture of a sentinel and he's on guard duty and he's watching because you know I I love your commandments I'm devoted to your commandments I'm seeking after your precepts Lord what are you saying to me because I know and I realize that only in you is there true freedom to be found in my life Ed, Edmund Burke said that eternal vigilance is the price of freedom. And any way you slice and dice that, we, we need to be on our guard. How many times does the Bible tell us to be on our guard? Like Proverbs chapter 4, is at verse 13? It's not on my notes, but it just comes to my mind. Guard your heart with all diligence. Paul told Timothy, he said, I want you to guard that treasure that's been given to you as a minister of the God. We're always needing to be diligent and guard the freedoms that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And obviously, I'm talking about spiritual freedom that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. We have to be diligent to guard that or else we fall back into bondage. And we've, we've all read the story of Israel, how that they were slaves in bondage for 400 years in Egypt. And Moses was raised up by God to lead them out of that bondage through the plagues and eventually through the blood of the lamb on that doorpost that was the very blood, the Passover lamb, Jesus Christ, who shed his blood on that cross for us all. They went out of that land free. The Bible says they walked out in victory. The Bible says they walked out and spoiled Egypt when they went. And uh, they got to that Red Sea and it parted at Moses lifting of the rod and, and believing God and trusting God and they were free. But if you read the Bible, hundreds of years later, this same people living in the land of freedom, living in the land of Canaan because they forgot the precepts of the Lord. And they turned their hearts toward idolatry and other gods and immorality. The Bible tells us that they once again came under captivity after the golden age of David, after the great military might of Solomon's age. This same people went back into captivity to Babylon and went 700 miles in today what is modern Iraq. And for 70 years they lived there. In bondage, their city was destroyed. Their livelihood was destroyed. But here is my point. Somebody said Cyrus gave a decree after Persia took over Babylon to let them go back to their homeland, to be set free from captivity. But let me tell you who really gave the decree. God Almighty gave the decree. Cyrus was just a puppet uh, being turned as a water course in the, the very heart and mind of God. And, and the Bible says that the people went back. And you read the great book of Ezra and Haggai and Ze Zechariah. And those great books of the Bible. And it talks about them returning. You know what it's called? It's called the second exodus. And the lesson for all of us is this. We can have an exodus. We can be free. But if we don't guard that freedom, if we don't take responsibility, if we don't make good decisions in Christ, the point is, is that we can go back in to bondage. But the great news is this. Not only the bad news, but the great news is this. That we can always have a second 
exodus in our life. Jeremiah 29 and 11, he sent them a letter. He sent them a message while they were over there. He said, you're coming out of there. Seventy years is going to be determined for your captivity because this is what God says. I know the plans that I have for you, says the Lord. They're not plans to harm you. They're plans to prosper you and to give you a future and to give you a hope. And the point is this. You and I, if we find ourselves in captivity to a relationship, in captivity to some kind of bondage in our lives, praise be to God, we can have a second and a third and a fourth exodus, whatever we need, because he's the Christ who sets us free. Amen. Amen. Galatians chapter 5, verse 1. It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then. You got to guard it. Got to be diligent. You got to stand firm like a soldier. And do not let yourselves be burdened again. 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 By a yoke of slavery. Are y'all with me this morning? Sometimes we, you know, we're like the Jews when Jesus was giving them that great message that I've been quoting from John 8. If you continue, those who believe in me, if you continue in my word that uh, hold to my teaching, you shall know the truth and truth shall set you free. And they said, we, ain't, we haven't been in bondage to anybody. And they were in bondage right then. They said, we're Abraham's descendants. And sometimes we're in bondage and we don't really even realize it, but we've got to guard and be diligent about the freedom that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ. And then finally, number four, freedom is always possible. Doesn't matter where you've been, how many Babylons you've been in, freedom is always possible. If you find yourself today in any form of captivity in your life, Sometimes we wonder, will I ever get free in this binding abuse and manipulation? You know, you call drug abuse what? Dependency, right? I mean, is that a synonymous term? Some people, you know, we, we are dependent on God. When I talk about our independence, obviously we're dependent on God and we're interdependent as the body. But we don't let people control us and to think for us. But we don't never ever rather we don't ever need to see ourselves as dependent on anything, whether it's a substance, any kind of an addiction. Much of what addiction involves is nothing more than an escapism. But glory be to God today that you and I can run to him. And the Bible says that in him there's a strong tower and the righteous run into it. They're safe. Because he's got these great protective walls for us to keep us free. To walk about in our spacious places so we can, we can throw aside every shackle and every chain that binds us. See it again, John 8 and 36. If the Son sets you free, you will be free indeed. Hallelujah. The power of the Holy Spirit today is here. If you haven't come to know Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you can be set free today by the power of His grace is by simply confessing Him as Savior and Lord, repenting of your sin, turning to Him, trusting Him. But if there's an area in your life that you're struggling with, that you're wondering, can I ever be free from this? Yes. It's the lie of the enemy. Freedom is always possible. How many times did Jesus tell us all things are possible to the one who believes? That's all we got to do is trust Him, have faith in Him. Several years ago, I started working with a young man who his parents had come to our church, but for whatever reason, their teenage sons did not come to church with them. 
three people, but I, so I, I wasn't quite sure about that situation. They had raised their boys in a Christian home. He, as a young man, seemed to have everything going for him. One of the most intellectual people I'd ever known eventually. He uh, had a wonderful marriage, two precious children. But he got to that place in his life that he couldn't believe, he said, in a God. And along with that state of what he felt was almost torture, he couldn't shake his addiction. It was ruining his relationship. He would lose his marriage. It was ruining his, his workplace. And even though his workplace was a great place and had a great career, they would send him to this rehab and that rehab. But he, he just couldn't shake it. As I worked with him and talked with him, I'll never forget the day he called me up on the phone. And he said, I just want you to know I, I got through that barrier. And I want you to pray with me because I've, I've accepted Jesus Christ as my Savior and Lord. And it was a great day for him. But there was that addiction, that bondage. In his case, it was an addiction to substance. It was an addiction to alcoholism and then he was he would just ruin I mean I'm talking daily in inebriated just losing it all and after rehab and recovery center after recovery center it was like is this possible sometimes God delivers in an instance how many of you ever had an instant deliverance and then sometimes we got to ask for help. And that's what the body of Christ is for. And he, he went to a, he went to a, I've never heard anything like it, but it was a Christian recovery center. And when he came back and he explained it to me, it, it, it was nothing like I'd ever heard from. With all the great leaders out there that's tried and somehow succeeded, he was set free. That was, that, that was seven, eight years ago, at least. And today, he's got a family. He's got his boys. He's got his job. He's in the church. He's living for God. And if you talk to him, he's free indeed. He's free indeed. And so don't ever think, well, is this possible for me? Maybe it's an addiction to substance or porn or some abusive relationship you feel under bondage to it's always possible I will walk about in freedom for I seek after I sought your precepts stand with me would you please Father in the name of the Lord Jesus Lord I just want to pray a, a prayer of freedom this morning over this place if anyone's watching online Father, it's my prayer that, that the Holy Spirit would break through in technology as you always do and, and convict and touch and give hope this morning and give, give hope. There's always hope. There's, it's always possible. All things are possible in you. And, and we thank you for life and, and liberty this morning in Christ Jesus. I pray now for those that may not know you as Savior, that first of all, that they would be set free from the law of sin and death and, and be able to enjoy the vastness of your life, life more abundant, you called it. You said it was immeasurable. And if, as I pray this, if there's anyone ever doubting what kind of life they can have, you said it's a life that's immeasurable. A life that's immeasurable. Hallelujah. Thank you for abundance this morning. Thank you for abundance. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for anyone here who feels bound this morning and, and they, they're letting somebody else do their thinking for them. Lord, I pray today that they would have a declaration of independence to be dependent on you. And I pray that they would declare and make a decision today that I will walk about in freedom. 
over this addiction, over, over this thing that holds me down in my life, over this person that tries to intimidate and dominate and manipulate me in my life. Lord, I, I yield myself to you today and I receive freedom from you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. You know what I want us to do? You know, I was going to ask people that maybe balance up. Sometimes that's so personal. It's more important for me, for somebody that's battling an addiction or a bondage, that they need to be set free. It's more important for me that we get free than who we see may become. So what I'm going to ask you to do, and I know it's not up here. It can be back there, but there's something about when we make a decision and step out and be determined for God and be diligent with the Lord. He meets us in our faith walk with Him. And He grants to us His grace and His mercy that's free. I'm going to ask you to step out of your pew from all over the building and come. And come. Because all of us, the truth is, all of us have known some kind of bondage. Would you come from all over the building? And if you have some kind of an addiction, some type of bondage today to anything that's holding you, you may want to kneel in this altar. You may want to stand, but would you just lift your hands as a sign of freedom? Just as a sign, Lord, I'm giving this to you today. I, I'm just, I'm, I'm making a decision, Lord. I, I'm just walking about in, in freedom right now. I'm going to lift my hands to you. Oh, I feel his presence. I feel the spirit of God. Hallelujah. The Bible says where the spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. If you know Jesus Christ, if you don't know Jesus, the moment you receive him, the Holy Spirit comes in to live and he is the one that guides you into all truths. He is the one that leads you into the spacious places of freedom and life. Lift your hands all over, would you please? If you're standing in the back or you're standing up front or if you're kneeling or you're sitting, just begin to receive what God's got today. Re begin to receive freedom in your mind and in your life. Heavenly Fathers, I speak again in prayer over this congregation. I pray that we would not be held in bondage to anybody, that we would see ourselves as a bond servant of the Lord Jesus Christ, a love slave to you, Lord, who set us free. Oh, I praise you today, Lord, that I can walk about in freedom in my life, in my heart, in my marriage. I can walk about in freedom. And I'm just asking you, Lord, to minister today. We come against addiction. We come against bondages today. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, those people that are among us, our brothers and sisters, Lord, we support them today. We all know what it's like to feel like, can we shake this off my life? Can we shake this off of my mind? In the name of the Lord Jesus of Nazareth, I declare your word of liberty and your word of freedom over their minds, over their hearts. Oh, Father, in the name that's above every name, Lord, may there be a decision made today in Jesus' name to know that, Lord, you've got an abundance of life, liberty, and joy today in Jesus' name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. While your hands are raised, if they're not, why don't you just consider doing that? Now begin to receive as you just gave that to the Lord all over the building. Let's just begin to receive His grace, His grace, His grace, His power. Holy Spirit, move in this place today. Holy Spirit, touch us this morning in this house. Hallelujah. Without your grace, without your touch, we can't live in the vastness of your joy and your peace and your goodness today. In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I feel his presence. I feel his presence. If you're comfortable doing this, if, you com if you're comfortable doing this, won't you just lay your hand over on the person that you're standing near? Just lay your hand on their shoulder if you're comfortable doing that. And, and, just, and just ask the Lord to move in their life. Most likely they don't have a, something they're dealing with in way of a bondage perhaps, but I want to tell you where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. There's freedom. To, to have joy again. There's freedom to praise God again. There's freedom to rejoice again. There's freedom. Hallelujah. To walk about in the vastness of the abundance of your grace. 
In Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, receive this morning, church. Now to him, now to him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that works within us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. While your head is on somebody's shoulder, if there's any bondage at all, let's just break the powers. I want to tell you, Jesus breaks every fetter. He sets his people free. Hallelujah. He breaks every chain. There's power in the name that's above every name. The name of Jesus of Nazareth. Just speak his name. Speak his name. Hallelujah. We bless you. We honor you today, God. We give you glory. We give you praise as we just pray for one another this morning. Hallelujah. Lord, may freedom not only ring, but may freedom reign. May freedom reign this morning in, in our spacious place with you that you provided for us. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. We bless you. Can we just clap to the Lord again today? Let's give him praise. Amen. Amen. Have a wonderful holiday. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you and give you peace. And I didn't get that exactly right, but you got all the message there. God bless. Love you. Go with the Lord.